Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with Cool Guy. Welcome back. Another episode of Jeepers with Cool Guy. Next thing, let's take off the grill. I think we need to do the light housings first so that we can unhook the, the wiring. And then at that point, I think it's just the grill supports. And maybe I think there's one body mount underneath here. I already know that this thing's rusted out and that's a complete catastrophe. But that'll be fun to see what happens when we get to that point. From what I can tell, there's one screw at the bottom here and then there's two maybe adjustment screws up top. But I think we take this first, this one off here first. Small little screw. Once you get that lower screw out, all you need to do is just take a screwdriver and just slowly pop it out. And the thing comes right off. The tongue goes into the groove up here and it's just held in by that lower screw. There's another screw on the inside here that is connected to a spring. Helps to align the light. A pair of needle nose pliers. Pull the spring in and out. And once you get that unlatched, you should be able to pull the light out. You just pull the wiring harness off of the back of the light. Okay, let's go back to the beginning here. Uh, you do not need to take out any screws other than the main reta uh, bottom retaining screw. And it connects right into here. And then you can use a pair of needle nose pliers and pull out the spring that's in the bottom left hand corner right next to that screw that I took out. Okay, moving on, let's take out the lower parking light, fog light, whatever you want to call it. These have a plastic housing to them, plastic lens, so be very careful taking these out, especially with those screws. That is if you want to keep these. Mine's faded. Don't really know what purpose it's serving, but it is original, so I will stick with it because it's original. Uh, huh. Okay, now what? Well, that was easy. Apparently, it was just held in by those two screws on the side. And then from there, you can unhook. No remove instructions on this one. Oh, here we go. There's a uh, connecting harness up above it. So you just need to pop that out with a screwdriver. Don't need a screwdriver. It just uh, uses friction to uh, connect. And there's your fog lamp, which apparently has been spray painted silver by previous owner. Next step is to take out the hood supports, grill supports. This is a 9 16 bolt. All I need to do is loosen that end up enough to get it off. Yeah, same with that, apparently. All I need to do is loosen it up. So we now have that undone, we now have that undone, so, oh, ha, that would not have been good. Uh, apparently we need to take the radiator off. You need to take off the radiator hoses, obviously, so that's the upper and the lower. I've already drained this, so I should be good there. There's four bolts on the back of the uh, radiator. You can only have a guess what size they are. I'm going to go with mm, a half inch. Feeling kind of confident in that. Seems like everything else on this thing is a half inch. I might have mentioned that once or twice. This one's got a transmission vent uh, in the uh, need of, if you're under water, uh, this allows your transmission to breathe. You should essentially have these on here. They've been removed, you might want to replace them. Okay, that's unhooked. That's unhooked. Radiator's unhooked. I think I could probably reach to pull the radiator out. There's like some radiator fluid. Well, this isn't incredibly awkward or anything. Now I need to do is unscrew or unbolt the rusted through nappy body mount at the base of the uh, grill here. So this is what I mean by nappy and nasty. So it'd be interesting to see once we sandblast this, what's left of this grill. Um, I'm assuming that this is probably just rubberized filler. 
Uh, but I need to take the body mount off that's underneath this piece. Uh, I can't wait to see what that looks like. I need to take out the wiring harness. And that runs all the way through. It runs from the driver's side, which is where the connection line is, all the way over to the passenger side lights. Well, there's no other way to put it other than this is just awkward and clunky. But you need to fish your wiring harness out. There's three wiring harness uh, class that you need to push through the top part of the grill here. Well, last but not least, time to take off the grill. Uh, mine, I'll show you here in a second, the body mount is rusted through the frame piece, so I'm going to have to manufacture something there. And the bottom part of the grill is rusted out, so I'm going to have to manufacture something there. Because uh, I want to keep this. Everything's in really good shape except for that bottom support piece. Wow, that's a really big hole. We now have the grill removed. Are we having fun yet? This is cool. Look at this. I mean, now we're totally into the inner components of the Jeep. Got the whole motor exposed. Everything's been removed off the front. Now we can start taking off the main body um, and then getting back to repairing this stuff. Actually, this is, I mean, it's not great, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. All I need to do is just cut a new piece here and weld that in. So that's good. Frame looks like it's in pretty decent shape. There's going to be a whole bunch of things on here. It's kind of like opening up Pandora's box.